The Los Angeles bubble is a term I hear a lot, both inside and outside of Los Angeles, and uh, the term conjures images of, uh, uh, you know, cambacadas and avabucha and man buns and therapists and yoga and veganism and, and therapists. The Los Angeles bubble is like the yin to the yang of the Bible Belt, even though the Bible Belt would probably reject me using terminology that's based in Eastern mysticism. Can I get an <laughs> yeah, and you can't really deny that the Los Angeles bubble is a real thing. It is. I've lived here for going on like 10 years and I've changed a lot. I've swung politically like a, a skinny Tarzan you know, on a vine just from the right to the left. I grew up in Florida and I, I, I once shook George W. Bush's hand and now, even now, the main reason I want Trump not to be in office anymore is just so hopefully Netflix will give him a stand-up special, which I think is the best way to make everybody a winner. I think, honestly, it's pro that's probably one of the better ideas I've ever had. And I've had two or three of them. I think it would be kind of hard for me not to change as a result of my environment because I'm what's called a uh, living organism, despite what I feel on the inside. Um, please open your Bibles now to the book of Romans, uh, which says, and I quote, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And it goes on to say that by testing, you will discern the will of God, what is good and perfect and acceptable. Yeah, and the problem with uh, growing up in the church like I did uh, is that I wound up actually believing a lot of what the Bible says. And you know the difference between a belief and a thought? You can change your thoughts. Here we go. Now we're getting into the Church of Los Angeles. You can change your thoughts. Change it. Reject those negative. Get rid of it. Don't think of it that way. It's don't just change it. Manifest. Manifest your dreams here in Los Angeles. You won't make any money, but you'll be doing what you wanna do. But I think the problem with the Church of Los Angeles, the thing that they fail to mention, is that if on some level you don't believe. Uh, that you deserve success, or to be in a happy relationship, or to live uh, a good life that is filled with, with uh, nuance and growth. Um, if you don't believe that, then Peter Pan, guess what? No happy thought is gonna get you to Never Never Land. You understand what I'm saying? You're gonna need some surgery, and it's gonna hurt. But let's get back to, to our, our, our Bible study here. Um, by the way, the book of uh, Romans is my favorite book of the Bible. Roman is also my favorite character in the television show Succession, which I hope comes back very soon. Um, the, the character of Roman is uh, very different than the book of, of Romans in the Bible. And I don't know if they planned that, but it's what they got. <laughs> it's 8 a.m. So when I read that verse, my first thought is, and this has been on my mind a lot, especially with the elections coming up, is have I just conformed to this world? Um, and I don't think I have. I think the answer is no. Uh, have I been affected by it? Absolutely. And I would have it no other way. I like it. I like being here. I like the changes it's caused in me. And I like even the stupid crap that is this culture. I just do. I know it's stupid. And I don't like that it's stupid, but I like that it's stupid. I also think it's just very easy for my generation to crap on religion. It's easy to crap on our upbringings. Um, we all have therapists. We're all on some path. We all think we know best. I'm an expert on thinking I know what's best. Uh, but the reality is that a lot of it is good. And one of the good things is that I get to walk through life and not really feel super scared that if I read something or, or dive into a particular worldview that all of a sudden my foundation is just gonna crack and I'm gonna become a psychopath. Believe me, I've tried. I have tempted fate. I have gone, I've gone so many different, a lot of it I've talked about publicly, a lot of it I haven't, and it's gonna stay that way. But a result of it is, has been, oh, I'm fine, everything's okay, and this adds a certain layer, a, a new dimension, a more fun dimension to life than I previously had, and I'm very thankful for that. 
I'm filming this on Super Tuesday, so my my brain is in the election mode, and I've kind of been way too into the, the Democratic primaries, and I've been wondering, you know, I, I don't like being wrong. <laughs> I hate it, actually. Um, uh, my girlfriend and I have been playing a lot of Scrabble recently, and she's so good at it, and it makes me so angry because I'm Mr. Smartman, and she's so much smarter and it makes me so mad. But I like I like knowing what I'm talking about. It gives me a sense of grounding. And so while I know Los Angeles has affected my political views, I also know that Google has, and I know that reading has, and I know that talking to different types of people has, and that all is part of living in Los Angeles in 2020 and having the internet constantly at my disposal. Um, it might be breaking my soul down piece by piece, but hey, everything has a price. No free lunches. <laughs> I don't know, there's no, there's no like, like map, you know, there's, I can't look at a flow chart to see how it's like, boop, boop, boop. I can't a little bit. I know like Los Angeles affected my, my politics, but I also know that I, I, I grew up, you know, doing community theater and I grew up surrounded by the LGBT community while also going to church. And those things, those things bumped heads a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I know I went to college and I studied zoology, which had an emphasis specifically on evolution and ecology. Uh, while also being a part of a worldview that rejected evolution for the most part and didn't want to believe it, wanted to make sure that I believed that the earth was 10,000 years old. That belief, uh, that thought, that idea didn't stick with me. And that was a result of diving into a different thing and exploring it. Uh, and, and, and also, I used to not really like, um, like uh, whiskey, but then I started drinking it. And then I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> That was me backing up. I don't know. I don't. I, I tried to throw in a line there that I didn't. I didn't really like that part. Did you like it? I didn't like that part. So I know zoology, like studying science, definitely changed me, and it also made me really like animals, specifically, most recently too, octopuses. It's not octopi. I swear, it, don't say octopi. I'm listening to a book right now called Other Minds, uh, and it's about the octopus and the deep sea and consciousness and the origin of consciousness. And one of the chapters is about why we age and why it's so confusing at first glance from an evolutionary perspective, because it's like, on one hand, you would think we are like an automobile where the parts wear out and it becomes impossible and the car eventually breaks down and that's why we die. But what you find in science is that our cells are constantly renewing themselves every cell. So we're constantly getting new parts. So theoretically, if you were to put new parts constantly in a car, it would never have a reason to break down. And yet for some reason, we as humans die at like 80 or 90, hopefully, or 100, hopefully not. And it reminds me of the, the be transformed by the renewal of your mind, uh, which can be renewed by cells. You know, and is being renewed by cells right now, but it can also be renewed by new experiences and meeting new people and moving to new places and following your dreams and also not following your dreams and taking a more responsible approach to life. All of it's good things, as long as you're growing in the right direction. And that's wonderful, that's good news. That's very good, that's the good news. Great, we found it. This is an optimistic video. Death and optimism, wow. Really explore new territory here, right? It's funny, it's funny that life is, it's a very life thing to do. <laughs> to be like, here's all new cells, all the time. Any part of you, it's gonna get renewed, brand new. Why am I still dying then? New skin, why wrinkle? Because Frank Sinatra song. That's life! Yeah, I think beliefs are, uh, I think beliefs are embedded in us. I think they're, um, they're kind of hard to change. I think that they are ingrained in your DNA. I know some of my beliefs are kind of ingrained in my DNA. I don't know which ones are and which ones aren't. Um, but I like that, I think it's cool. and. It means that life is about freedom and also curiosity. You're free to not be curious. Um, I don't think that's as enjoyable of a life. I like the fact that we just get to explore things and try on worldviews and, and, and test our convictions because I think that if you do that, like Roman said in Succession, you will learn the will of the God. Of, you will learn the will of God. You will learn what is good and acceptable and perfect. And I feel like for the most part, I'm on the right track in that area. So yeah, I'm affected by the Los Angeles bubble, but I also like that. It's also part of this wonderful gift that we get from for uh, not a very long amount of time, but that said, way longer than an octopus has 
way more time than an octopus has. You know, that's not really fair. They die after one to two years. And they're so smart. They're so smart. Oof. They're so cool. Anyway, that's been on my mind, um, and I like it a lot. I think this is probably inspired by Rhett and Link's spiritual deconstruction um, podcast episodes that they did uh, on Ear Biscuits. I think you should check it out. Um, the fact that, that Rhett took more of a scientific approach uh, to his spiritual deconstruction and Link took um, a more kind of emotional, social um, element to it is very cool. Um, and it also, it reminds me of both my days in zoology as well as the theater. And it's just, it's a neat, it's, it's strangely parallel and it's very freeing to see people in this generation of creators do that and, uh, and be open about this stuff. And so I'm trying to do that. And uh, I also have been fairly transparent in the past about some of my stuff, which you can see on my special, Holy Shit, which by the way is available now uh, for free on Amazon Prime, which is really cool. If you're not in America, you can download Express VPN, which I used in, uh, my girlfriend and I used in London to watch a show called The Outsider on HBO, which we keep watching and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the special is there and also um, I'm gonna be talking about being in your 30s and all sorts of fun stuff and new material in Washington DC at the DC Comedy Loft on April 3rd and 4th. That's Friday, April 3rd and Saturday, April 4th. I'm doing four shows. There's a ticket link in the description if you would like to come. Um, it's gonna be super fun, I can't wait. Washington DC. In April, are you kidding me? In 2020, they invited the wrong guy. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about it. And so um, if you wanna come, come check it out. It's gonna be super wonderful. And it's, so, it's also just really hard to get weekend shows. Uh, and so the fact that I even have four shows in two days is very, it's very exciting. So anyway, that's happening. And, uh, and, and you know, let's have a great 2020. Let's just see what happens, you know? And let's explore different ideas and just hear people out. And let's not maybe forget that uh, we're Americans. So regardless of who is in the White House, we're probably gonna still have the freedom to do whatever the heck we want. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, uh, including if what you wanna do is watch a show like The Outsider. Which is just, I love Stephen King and I'm like, what? How, mm, you're trying, but it's, yeah. Anyway, I love you, uh, bye. That's the end of the video. Just turn the video up, turn it off, turn it.